And welcome to Once More With Feeling, Season 2 Year End Wrap Up. Joining today, as per usual, is... Me, Pierce. I'm always fucking here. It's what I do. And joining us are... Richard. How unfortunate. My taste is terrible. Boys to suffer. And Dan, who only listened to half the music he actually bought, let alone any of the other stuff he downloaded. Playing the music in current year. (laughs) Current year minus one, you mean? (laughs) <laughs> we prepared with it in celebrity deaths it's, it's, it's... I'd like to think that every, that uh, eventually that, and when we look back on this in history it'll just be marked the current era <laughs> <laughs> the era, the current ages the current age like it'll be like you know stone age, bronze age, you know, bronze age and uh, information age and then just current age according to music it's new age so hey it'll be the universal century except for school Immediately followed by the Sultana age. Yes, well, yes, I'm very good at that. Well, the thing is, 2016 will just be classified as its own age. <laughs> the death of everyone we loved age. No, no, it won't. That's too simplistic. That's too simplistic, man. It will be classified as the age of pain. 2016, a dumb odyssey. <laughs> 2016, the year idiocracy started. We will look back on this day in the future and realise this is where everything started to go wrong. Mm. It all started with David Barry dying. Oh, oh well, well way, to, way to start the ball rolling. <laughs> oh, let's wait for the death list yet. We, we've got to ease our what listeners we have into this sort of shit. Yeah, but, but, but David Barry, man... Yes, and we'll get to that. It feels like you're just reaching into like a coffin-shaped hat and pulling out. Very, you can, that's the way 2016 goes. You can just pull out names from a hat, a very morbidly shaped hat, and uh, you're like, yeah, okay, that's our entry for today. It's like a tombola. Except the prizes you win. They find a David Bowie record. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like what happened with Michael Jackson, I guess, isn't it? Like you know, the, you know, they, they, they really, well, yeah, they released a bunch of stuff that you know was left behind for whatever reason, and uh, yeah, I guess that's the new thing now. Mm. But then again, I don't know, maybe that's happened before. How long until Bowie becomes a vocaloid? Oh God! Well, the glorious age of Tupac on stage with Hasley Miki still hasn't arrived, unfortunately. As much as people Photoshop it. Um, I, we need that to happen. It needs to be a thing. Yeah, well, we're, we're so close, you know, we've all got all these dumb hologram things. Mm. Um, I mean, let's face it, Bowie did a duet with a video recording of Freddie Mercury, so... <laughs> what you're saying is we need the Omicron album. <laughs> He's got there. Yeah, for anyone not to know, uh, that was uh, a video. Omicron the Nomad Soul was a very bad video game by master wordsmith David Cage. Uh, and uh, yeah, David Bowie contributed the music. It was the worst mistake he ever had. This is the same guy who made Beyond Two Souls, uh, Heavy Rain, and Fahrenheit, Indigo Prophecy, whatever the hell it's called. Depending on where you're from, yeah. Because fuck having one name across the world is terrible. A masterpiece of comedy, in other words. Jason! <laughs> yeah, people will most likely know David Smith as the creator of, of uh, Run It, Letting Your Child Get Run Over, and, ki- and another one, Kidnap Simulator 20. Oh, wait, when was it? 2009? It's all that. Oh, no, no, I'm feeling old. Too long ago. Hmm. Uh, I can't believe Heavy Rain came out 36 years ago. <laughs> Many current years ago. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it doesn't even. I can't even do a preamble now. We've just completely <laughs> gone off the Too rails. Bad. Too bad we run the show now. The ship basically overtakes the world. That's basically an apt description of this year. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, ah, oh, I I swear, last year was basically just. 
The pop charts were dominated by absolute awfulness from what I could see. Um, According to the Kerrang! rock charts for the best songs of last year, Bring Me the Horizon were in third place and Green Day were in second. Ah! I don't think it's Green Day. Yeah, apparently, from from what I from what little I heard, it sounds like what the general consensus is is that it's um, a re-repeat of a re-repeat a repeat of American <laughs> Idiot. Awesome. I think re-repeat is probably a more apt phrase here. Yeah. yeah. But isn't that album like over ten years old now? Yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently, and it wasn't good then either. That apparently, this new one is really like it. Um, um, and, I, and you know, uh, this is this is I just want to get for just sort of paying attention to people who like Green Day as well. So it's not like if they're gonna repeat something, why couldn't they repeat something from like the nineties era when I actually liked them? No, we no, we it's it's like they they can it's like you can see where the money starts rolling and then go, okay, Matt, that's it. If you pause at the exact moment, you can see their bank breaking. Yeah, yeah, America. <laughs> Yeah, American Idiot is 12 years old. Jesus Christ, that's too long. That's far too late to have bought that baby. <laughs> well, the Trumps has done that, hasn't he? Uh... How long do we go before we mention Trump, then? <laughs> um... Oh, no, you could have prevented this. We couldn't have prevented anything, that's the problem. We couldn't have prevented it. No, we're in the wrong country. Well... No, 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 I meant talking about it. Day, you know, anything we say now will be just blasphemy against our god emperor. <laughs> well, I, I will nip this in the bud. Everyone who voted for Trump was wrong. Everyone who voted for Hillary was wrong. Everyone who didn't vote was wrong. Everyone who did vote was wrong. There, we're done. Basically, you fucked no matter what you did. It's not your fault. You had no options that were valid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a reason the Canadian import, uh, the, uh, import immigration's like crashed. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> but anyway. No, no, no! I'm not even going to add to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just nipping it in the bud right now. Just <laughs> Trump would like to nip it in the bud. I don't know what that means, but I'm sure he'd like to. Save a fools. That sounded like a very. A very weird way of turning one of his more unpleasant quotes. Well, we all know he really likes to grab cats. <laughs> <laughs> he loves he loves to stroke his adorable cats. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Music. Is there other words about God Emperor not music to our ears? No, no, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'll stop. To be fair, I, I did start to get this as a music show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just going to investigate what the Billboard 200 ended with. Why does the Billboard 200 sound like some dystopian sci-fi thing? Well, pay attention to the Billboard 200, or else you will be prosecuted. I mean... I mean, thankfully, Black Star was on the Billboard 200. As it should be. Yeah. Speaking of Black Star, though, it is pretty great overall. Yeah. It's a really strong album. Yeah. Ah. Um, yeah. Just the fact that they had a ten-minute, a, a, a goddamn ten-minute song as the opening for the album. Yeah. I, I got caught up in all the, um, the sort of craziness when that came out, like the. Let's play it backwards to see if there are any hidden messages and that kind of thing. There actually is. That's a level of just... I don't know what, what that says, but it, I do not feel happy thinking that that's the immediate reaction. Trying what? to find hidden messages in David Bowie's music is like trying to find hidden messages in... It's like searching for a specific needle in a giant haystack of needles. Yeah. <laughs> Drink your Ovaltine. <laughs> Why Ovaltine? Uh, never mind. It's probably, probably an American thing. I don't know. Uh, oh, it's just... I think the thing that... Sorry. The thing that I think set it all off was the fact that Station to Station, I think, was the last thing he went really super occult with. Mm. If I'm not mistaken. And since then, he sort of went, nah, this is all bollocks. And then suddenly... Now he's released an album that's full of it, 
So everyone sort of just immediately went, well, shit, there must be a bunch of stuff in here. And that doubled after he died. Uh, you don't need to play it backwards to find hidden messages. The messages are right there. I'm dying. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. He It's really important. He might have written Hail Satan or something. It's, it's, it's unbelievable the kind of stuff. Like, I have to wonder, whenever there's something about a secret message in a song, like be it. You know, I remember, oddly enough, the one thing I remember most is when people used to go, oh my goodness, there's Hail Satan in the Pokemon theme, uh, if you play it backwards. It, how, for one thing, why do people bother? Like, I, I understand that there was a time when people did, but also, what kind of ma what kind of appreciation of an, of an art must you, do you have if, the, if your first instinct is, let's listen to it in exactly the wrong order it's meant to be listened to. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it just... Boy, I love... a Boy, I can't wait to listen to this new album in the exact opposite direction to what is intended. I mean... Um, well, it's like a second they watched Memento back with... Oh, wait. <laughs> I mean, the, the key one that it puts me in mind of is... Um, I, I think it was a Saxon song where it's sort of like you play it backwards and it sounds like uh, I asked my girlfriend to get me a mint or something. It's something like that. I know it, it's it's along those lines. And it's sort of like, wow, you really can't. Why are you playing it backwards to try and read something into it? You can't read anything. <laughs> In this case, there is a very specific message and it's it's basically the one that it's a bit unnecessary considering that it's released in an album with lazarus <laughs> but um, yeah the message is i'm over living it and it's, it's enunciated in both meanings of that phrase i guess as in i'm over it and oh i'm over it right so, i don't know it seems a bit unnecessary but it is there mm. I think if I ever were to release an album and release it and put a hidden message in it, I'd just put a bit a message in, so sort of right at the end of the song, so that the moment you start putting put it on, I it would just say you just hear. I'd really rather you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Um, what, what, your time. what what I do is I do what um they did in Red Dwarf, with the backwards episode, when um the guy comes in and fires. Crichton and Rimmer, what he's actually saying is, I'm pointing at you, but I'm not actually addressing you. I'm addressing the sad bastard who actually took this footage and rewound it to find out what I'm actually saying. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the gist of it. That, that's what I'd put in. Just something like, why are you playing this backwards? If you were hearing this, you have too much time on your hands. Yeah. But yeah, um, there's, I guess it's just the, the video itself is the thing that set all this off more than anything, like, because it's, it's, it's got callbacks to, like, everything, basically. Like, the first callback you see, I think, is, um, Major Tom, which the whole song there was about a human getting dragged away from humanity and becoming divine, and then we find him just dead on the planet, but it's, it's interesting, right? There's so much going on just in that one video. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, artists like David Bowie, they are very careful, or were very careful, about crafting things in a very particular way so that their message, whilst clear, can also be interpreted in many different ways. And, well, Black Star, um, you could hear... A combination of how he was singing things and the lyrics and just... There was a dull ache in his voice. Mm, mm. I feel like, if anything else, it's basically his desire to sort of separate the man David... Uh, whatever his actual name is, I can't remember what it is. Uh, David Robert Jones from the figure of David Bowie and the figure of like Major Tom, Ziggy Stardust, etc. Yeah. Like, there's a very sort of key element in, in the video where he's playing three different characters. Mm. One who's sort of a um, flamboyant sort of trickster who's always seems to have taken over his body. Mm. One who's propagating a book of, well, basically, Crowley references. 
And one that's meant to represent, I think, a blind, ignorant man, you know, like, struggling along. Mm. Yeah, so there's so much going on. I don't even, I'm not entirely sure how to dig into it. I guess if we'd done a show right after this, yeah, I might have been able to dig into it a bit more because I have all the sources in front of me, but I don't. Yeah, I mean, because of how I was feeling about Bowie's death, I pretty much put off listening to Black Star until like a week ago because I was just sort of like, I don't like the idea that there's never going to be any more Bowie. Well, at least he actually had something else to put out at the very end. Mm. I mean, if you look at Prince, who also died this year, I don't think he had anything out for a while, did he? He just certainly didn't have anything else. That, he didn't just have a, an album wish out the door, uh, you know, when he when he passed away, did he? Uh -oh. um, because if you, I'm just looking at the Billboard 200 now. Uh, I'm seeing like, there are two interviews with David Bowie. Mm. Um, one is like a best of Bowie, and the other one is, of course, Black Star. There are only two, there are two entries because you know, with with a new album, that everyone you know in their grief and decision to suddenly you know get into Bowie, you know, um, you know, they were able to everything got poured into that new album. Whereas you know, Prince, there are four entries for him on the top on the Billboard 200 this uh, this last year, and uh, they're all like there's like there's the hits and the B slash the B sides, 1999. The very best of Prince and the Purple Rain soundtrack. You know, that's. Mm. I think that's a far. You know, all things considered, I think Bowie fans have got. Uh, you know, are in luck in a way because whilst it was you know awful that yeah you know the circumstances under which he passed away you know at least there was you know there was new content there was a, there was a goodbye. Yeah. Um, and uh, I mean, for Prince and for so many other uh, musicians who passed away last year, you know, there wasn't that. Mm. And you know they they were left stranded, and you know so that you know I I, I work in a news agency that, that I get to see all the music magazine covers every every month, and uh, Liz and them had uh, you know for for David Bowie you know it was a storm. It was like oh David Bowie look, look at this this new album, and then with Prince it was like here's a uh, uh, here's a here's a look back on the life of Prince. This is what he did a, a while ago. <laughs> That's kind of the problem is that Dick Bowie had a chance to put out one last album with loads of thoughts about what he was going through mm. yeah. right before it went. So. Yeah, yeah, that's... It's tragic, but it's yes. also the best possible thing you could, that, a, that a Bowie fan could really hope for. As a musician, he would have wanted that anyway. He would have wanted to be the last thing he did was to put out the uh, last bit of music. Yeah. Died doing what he loved. There are references directly in Lazarus as well of him basically being animated by... I don't, you know when artists often say, like, I don't know where it came from, this inspiration. It just sort of grabbed me and, you know, like an outside force. Mm. Lazarus directly references that because he, re he doesn't remember writing Station to Station or recording it. The outfit that he wears at one stage in Lazarus is the outfit he had on the cover of the album. That's interesting. And he sort of directly shows off like the process of writing as if he's hearing like, some sort of spirit talking. Hmm. You know, it, it's he's, he's basically trying to sort of show off, you know, in, in a very direct kind of way. This is sort of what I was trying to get at over time, you know? And it's a shame that Prince couldn't come up with something as creative as that at the last minute, you know? Yeah, um, last thing Prince did was in 2015, unfortunately. That was oh. the last new material he released. Well, uh, I get that's not too bad. Even getting out one, you know, getting one something out one year before you pass before you pass is pretty good comparatively. I would have thought. Yeah. You know, like you know, is is I suppose now I feel like a bit of an asshole because I'm like, oh well, you didn't get something out right before you died. It's like I, I'm not saying, well, you better save it up just in case you kick the bucket. But <laughs> you know, it's... well, yeah, but I mean, did he know he was going to die? Because David Bowie definitely did. Well, yeah. Um. Uh, I wonder, you know, I have to wonder whether, if, you know, from now on, could, I mean, there are so many people died in 2016. I feel like, I wonder if it's going to set a trend where uh, people are just going to record an album at some point, or, so sort of compile a song throughout their life and just be like, well, I'm just going to put these on the back burner and then, you know, put out when I die. <laughs> you know, just sort of just keep them saved up and just, because, and, you know, so many influential, amazing people died last year that I think Shall it's we... going to definitely have an impact on how people think about putting out music and really uh, you know uh, and musical legacy yeah shall we just 
might as well get it underway now because it's going because of how 2016 was if we don't get it over and done with now it's going to be a massive spectre over the course of the review we have a death cast yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. let's just get it out of the way the death list oh boy okay yeah so working backwards in terms of big names so you've got george michael yep who i i think wasn't it that he, it was a heart attack yeah heart failure yeah although of course the news is still so there's some ongoing police investigation uh me i don't know if you guys may understand that much but i've noticed that uh in the in the papers and stuff there's a lot of uh there was a lot of it was totally a drug overdose wasn't it I don't know, I can't bother, you know, I can't speak with the truth of it, but there's still, the point is there's still people talking about it and sort of making up their mind, you know, uh, people are saying, you know, the lover did it, but, you know, he was asleep in his car, apparently, I don't know, and uh, the thing is, it probably wouldn't have become a, as, wouldn't have become as big a deal if it hadn't wanted for the fact that his lover made some big outburst saying, well, he, all he wanted was to, don't you say, you know, that does raise a kind of, you know, a few kind of eyebrows to, to sort of suddenly say, Oh yeah, he actually really wanted to die a couple like a, a few days after, and like, well, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. But, what? Uh, that? Yeah, yeah, no, it was odd. It was odd. As Apparently, a... the guy was. To... Uh, as yeah, a very, was... I mean, it's quite distinctly different for the lover to say that compared to say, um, when there were suggestions that Debbie Reynolds dying was as a consequence of Carrie Fisher dying. That's an entirely plausible statement. Yeah. You know, just dying of a broken heart. It happens. Yeah, in, in any case, it, it, it's, it's been all very hard with George Michael. I, I assume it could well have just been a heart attack. People are saying, you know, they're, they're saying maybe it was drugs. I don't know. I I have no idea. Mm. Apparently the guy is, like, at, at this point, like, when you've got, all this news came out that the guy was in a, a, like a surprise, secret, amazing philanthropist dude, like more than, you know, could have been anticipated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, just because, well, you know, I'm not saying it was drugs. I don't necessarily, I mean, I know absolutely nothing. I'm just a punter, aren't I? But like, um, if the guy really was depressed or, you know, was and had all that money, you know, had enough money to go on philanthropy, it could have gone on anything, you know, and uh, it's a mystery. Yeah. I, I hope, you know, it's, it's sad. There... I don't want to really theorize about it too much. We'll we'll hear about exactly what it was in time, I'm sure, or or rather, if it if there is no truth to the claims, then you know it'll all just shut up in time, won't it? And mm. without us, without anything else being said. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've heard suppositions that because of George Michael being from a certain era yeah, and all that sort that of era. thing. Um, that it could have been that he finally succumbed to AIDS illness or something like that. Well... I mean, it, it's very difficult It's very difficult to say in that sort of situation because, you know... Yeah, in any case... <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, yeah. I, I've actually got... There's a website which sort of... It's got musicians who died in 2016... Six hundred and three. Jesus. So, well, th there was the day the music died, and now it's just the year the music died. I guess. Well, I mean, sixty-four of those sixty-six hundred and three would be the Red Army Choir. Well, <laughs> okay, that's kind of a that that distorts the numbers a bit, but yes, that's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, the entire Red Army Choir, sixty-four members died from a plane crash over the Black Sea. Bloody uh, plane crashes, it keeps happening. Yeah. Both Linda's good, and these guys. Jeez. I, I, I swear, if I was a famous musician, I would not travel by plane. Because... Yeah, famous musicians are Joseph Joe Star. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of like... It, it would be like the musician equivalent to bones from star trek not using the teleporter it's sort of like i'm not getting on the plane <laughs> musicians either die or disappear in planes and here i think the more apt comparison would be uh ba baracus from the a team yes <laughs> ain't getting me on no plane i pity the fool to get i pity the musician that gets on the plane and then like 
and then like Mr. T, they'll knock you out and then drag you onto the plane. <laughs> Death himself will come and beat you over the head and drag you onto the plane. Just so you can drag you down with the plane. Uh, the group was travelling on a Russian military plane to perform for troops. The initial routers report lists Russian time zone, um, so early morning December 26th, and mentioned President... Presidier? President Vladimir Putin, speaking in St. Petersburg, um, declared December 26th as National Day of Mourning. That is a lot of people to suddenly die at once, so I'll, I'll give them that. Yeah, it's sort of like... Especially such a sort of talented and, and well-loved group of people, especially. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm just imagining that there's sort of like 64 people all dead. It's more than just them, wasn't it? Because there's like a reporter and a bunch of other stuff, other people that are there. Possibly, I don't know the exact details. The fact is, at least the the uh, quiet and there's a reporter, and I think there's a group of reporters actually, and someone that's working for like oh, I can't remember what's that, but there's, there's someone like voting for well, not voting, um, kind of campaigning for certain things as well, like human aid or something like that. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, I think this incident, along with the incident with, with the Brazilian football team, uh. <laughs> Because they all died in a plane crash as well, I believe. Didn't yeah. They? Yeah. Makes me think, you know, ru- okay, maybe n- not ditch the idea of planes entirely, because clearly planes are good at getting people places fast. But what you should do is not put all your eggs in one basket as and just put every footballer or choir member on a separate team. In fact, no, pet them in pairs, get one footballer and one rush- and then on one choir member, assuming they're going in the same place. Um, <laughs> the Red Army has got out the general Brazilian football team. The Red Army is just, not just a football team anyway. Uh, I've just got this image of a Red Army choir person and a Brazilian footballer just sat next to each other looking really awkward, sort of like... Um, why are we on the same plane? And I like to think of them in first in first class and sort of clinging um, champagne glasses together to be, to be like, hope you have a good game, comrade. <laughs> Scoring a score goal for Mother Russia, comrade. You know. Uh... Well, they were traveling. They were traveling on a Russian military plane, so they wouldn't be clinking champagne and sitting in first class. It would be just they're wedged together, sort of oh, like. I'm sorry, vodka. <laughs> Here's your vodka ration. But I can't drink a whole one and a half liters by myself. <laughs> but in any case, you know, split them, split them up into multiple plates. They can't all crash. <laughs> it's not like you, you don't like you don't get twelve. You don't get twelve <laughs> plane pileups. This is twenty sixteen we're talking about. Don't challenge it. It will come back to kill us. I'll tell you about this one. <laughs> we finally put it in the ground. Don't tempt it. What the plane or the? Uh... Well, <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, we say this, I am grimly awaiting a repeat of this because everyone seems to think, well, thank goodness one circulation of the sun is we're going to lay this horrible tra- series of tragedies to rest. No, I don't think we th- that's not how it works. It's going to come in threes. <laughs> no, it comes in threes, to quote, yeah. To quote the MTV video, 2017 can't possibly be as bad as this because 2016 is bad. Bad. Yeah, no, it's it's gonna be. I reckon we're gonna have a repeat, or at least, you know, or even just like half of the year, whatever. It's just we're I'm... going to have more. I don't think we can have a repeat. They're all dead. <laughs> Not all of them. Not everyone. I'm not going to mention any names for safety reasons. Yeah. Okay, we'll just mention the names that are already dead, like Barrel House Chuck of Chicago. Of Chicago, that makes it sound like a. <laughs> Six of them died. <laughs> Observe our whole struck of Chicago. I just saw this. Does he tilt at the new um, windmill generator things instead? What? Don't <laughs> 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 um, um, uh, Barrel House. The list, please. Yeah. Barrel House Chuck died of prostate cancer. Um. One of the last links to a majestic lineage of Chicago blues and his death Monday afternoon at Advocate Condell Medical Center in Libertyville ends one of the more remarkable stories in the city's blues culture. He was 58 and died of complications from prostate cancer, said Betsy Goering, his wife. Holy fuck, Libertyville. <laughs> that is the best name for a place. Yeah. If I was going to die, I'd like to die in a place called Libertyville. 
But yeah, um, 58. That's the same age as my mum. Yeah, it's not exactly an old age. But these days, no. Um, and you had Greg Lake of Emerson Lake and Palmer. Yeah. Again, cancer. And again, 69. Okay. Um, also, Keith Emerson died last year at 71. Oh, that's a... Uh... They buried that product, literally. Well, he died of... Well, he killed himself. Which, yeah. which raises a few questions. Yeah. Um, Wasn't there someone from um, King Crimson as well? Uh, Greg Lake was in King Crimson as oh, well. Right, yeah. Um, Daddy Cool. Daddy Cool died? I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, the Business. Uh, but the English... Oi! Band... The business. Um, um, uh, not to be confused with J. Roddy Walston and the business. So you've got Mickey Fitz, the front man for the business, and then you've got oh, whatever. Uh, died of cancer. What is such a theme here? <laughs> um. Why did that, why are the deaths last year so mundane? I remember when we were talking in, in a previous year end cast that uh, that guy from ELO who got hit by a bale of hay. Yeah. Why, that, why can't that be more like that? I mean, like, I, or at least that's what I would want for myself. And admittedly, what I get to a ripe old age, but I like to think oh, I like to think that I'm going to get to 120 and then I'm going to get struck by lightning but like 50 times in a row. Yeah, that's happened a bunch of times before. Though. I was getting old. I don't think anyone's died from getting struck 50 times in a row row from lightning. Well, no, I'd imagine it, they died probably <laughs> midway through, but after like the first or second. But, yeah. Like, you know, I won't even get a chance to sit down because it will go, uh, after, like, just fall down dead because even while I'm, even after I'm dead, I'll be left standing by being held aloft by lightning. <laughs> If you have 50 times of lightning, there wouldn't be anything left to stand, just be smoking boot. Now, what will happen is your bones would get fused by the lightning, and that's why you're stood upright. It's worth noting, though, that it's entirely possible to be so, to survive that kind of thing uh, multiple times over, not necessarily in a row, but, like, uh, yeah, like one, of, one, of my, one of the superstars of my childhood who was eventually long dead before I was alive, but Mary Anning, the woman who discovered the ichthyosaur, she got struck by lightning, I think, twice or three times over the course of her lifetime. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, they don't make them as tough as they used to. It's all, it's all cancer nowadays, you know. Back in the day, we used to survive lightning thrice. Mm. <laughs> um, right. Uh, oh, there's a lot of deaths. Well, 600 and something, as you said. <laughs> I guess it's a battle of often. Leonard Cohen. Oh, oh God, yeah. yeah. I mean, at least he was a ripe enough. old age. Mm. You've got a lot of an album the same year as well, so... Nice. I mean, most of the names here I'm not recognising because, well... Sometimes if you recognise 600 and something names and you're familiar with all of them, then you'd hurt, you would be in a really, really depressed state right now. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I knew 600 people that died just... Well, it would be even wor worse if you actually knew each of those 609 people yeah. individually. <laughs> I knew 609 people! All of them died. We'd just be in a state of constant shock. Yeah. Um, there was Maurice White, the founder of, um, of Wind and Fire. Oh, God. There was uh, Paul Cantler of Jefferson Airplane. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, um, Pete Burns. <coughs> yeah, you're right. Just never ends. I wonder what it would take to get him to spin the right round in his grave. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, not sorry. Come on, oh, that's hilarious. Oh, boo. Um, let's not speak ill of the dead, I guess. Um, well, yeah, I'd call that joking, but that's a celebration. That, that's, I don't know, I think that's sort of paying tribute to as well. Like. Yeah. Of course, there's also, um, what's that, Glenn Frey. Huh? Uh, Co-founder of the Eagles. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, it's just, it never stops. Uh, some guy from Three Doors Down. I only vaguely know of them. It sure would be nice to get a list that isn't some terrible article that you have to click. Also, uh, Rick Profit as well. Oh god, you mean, yeah. You mean one of those articles where everything's like a slideshow and you have to click slowly from slide to slide as company by many events. Yeah, this is the list I'm going through, which is just the odd bit information. 
Oh yeah, that is much better. Yeah, I mean, I just to get my weeby thing in there. Just uh, Michiyuki Kawashima, the vocalist for Boom Boom Satellites. Yeah, he got a, he got a last song at the door as well. Mm-hmm. Mm, it was very good. It was incredible, it was a- actually. Yeah. Okay, it's one of those another one of those songs where it was basically written about him and going, Yeah, I'm probably gonna die soon. Yeah. This is my last farewell. Enjoy life. Well the lyrics the fir- the very first lyrics are uh, lay your hands on me when I'm bleeding dry. You know, you can't really get more uh, opaque in your ambitions than that, can you? Or not ambitions, you know what I mean. I'm, what in in the message you're trying to convey. Yeah, jeez. Um, I'm just going through I think we covered most of the main ones that we actually recognise and know well. There are quite a lot though, because the problem is there's also things like um, producers and stuff who have died as well. Yeah. yeah. Like Joe Esposito, who was Elvis Presley's merger. Mm. Oh really? Okay. And also, oh. um, oh, I can't think of his name, but the producer for the Beatles. Yeah, I mean, um, well, if you look at the Billboard 200, the, you know, the, there's some Beatles stuff in there as well. You know, that obviously that's been triggered by, oh no, the, the, you know, the Beatles producer guy has died. Um, but I think there's definitely been sort of an interest in sort of fairly recent dead musicians as well, because like I saw Michael Jackson in there as well. And it's like, <laughs> last year, I think it's just, uh, death of so many influential figures has made more and more about other influential things from the last few years you know it, it just <laughs> it's been a year of death that sort of led people to sort of i suppose sort of linger on the on the thought of it um cz tops manager bill ham he added he die no, didn't have a big enough beard i was about to say drowned on own beard <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't say but probably just old age he was 79 yeah oh just the cause of death oh <laughs> <laughs> Time itself. <laughs> well, it's icy cold, but it's. Oh man, it, it bums me out. It does. Mm. There was the uh, one of the guitarists of Three Doors Down, Matt Roberts. Yeah. From an overdose, apparently. Mm. Not unheard of. Far from unheard of. Especially for a rock band. And a keyboard player for Nine Inch Nails. Oh, Nine Inch Nails, of all things, okay. Yeah. Um. We are not even past August yet. I mean, I've scrolled a bit down, but it... when you when you see it laid out like this, it's a lot worse. Yeah. Look at them just go. Well, shit. Oh god, there was Sandy Palmer as well. The voice of help. Hmm. Um. Uh, uh, you've got um, Alan Vega of the duo Suicide. Um, died in his sleep at seventy-eight. So again, it's yeah, it, it's one of those. Some of those you can sort of go, okay, they were a good age to die. But some sort of like one guy, Mike Mahedi, I don't know, um, but he was only thirty-two. He died of a heart attack of all things. Thirty-two and dying of a heart attack. It's very possible, though, sadly. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a drummer of Megadeth. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, he was suffering from dementia, or was it dementia? It was some sort of yeah, it was a uh, frontotemporal dementia, which I think is it outfits super early. Hmm. Um. Frank Sinatra's son. Yeah, of course he was son in his S- he was in his seventies as well, so. I like how we have to title it like a monster movie sequel, Son of Sinatra. Well, he's literally Frank Sinatra, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, the fifth Beatle, I don't know if we mentioned that, George Martin, apparently. Uh, how many of the Beatles are left? Paul McCartney, I think Ringo Starr's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's the most likely to die last. Yeah, yeah. Fun fact, my great-grandma used to live just down the road from him. <laughs> Um, Anton Yelchin, the guy from Star Trek, uh, had his own punk band, apparently. Um, and, of course, he died from being run over by his own car. Yeah. And, given the description of how he died, it's one of those, Oh dear God, how was he run over? Because the description is, Blunt Traumatic Asphyxia. He run over his own throat? He's across his chest, maybe. Uh. So, not only did, did Prince die this year, but his protege, uh, someone called um, Vanity, mm. the singer for Vanity Six, also died this year. Jesus! Because she, her kidneys failed. Damn. Uh, this is so depressing, isn't it? It's, yeah. Thank God we're getting this out of the way now so we can shit post. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there was 
Paul Gordon from the B-52s. Oh, God. Well, the thing is, the, the optimistic way of looking at this is saying, okay, right, okay, so everyone, you know, all of these absolute legends have died. That just means we have to make new legends. Unfortunately, yeah. who is that at the top of the Billboard 200? Fucking Justin Bieber really? is at number three. Oh, right. I thought you were, I was going to say Adele. What? <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I do have some complaints about Adele that it's sort of only tangentially about Adele that I'll go into later. But yeah, but yeah, no, I mean, like the dinosaurs all died off by a meteorite pretty much at the same time. So, <laughs> and yeah, and, and, and look, look, at, look what we got. Oh, no. Oh, wait, no, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But my point is, awesome things can disappear, and that, you know, that just means that more awesome things have to happen in the future to make up for it. It's awful. And it's awful, you know, and it will always have been, you know, awful in retrospect looking back on it, but, you know, it just means that we have to carve out a new hole for ourselves. I say that as if I'm going to be part of this, some great musical revolution when I'm a piece of shit who doesn't know what to do at all about that kind of stuff, but I'm sure there will be out, there will be out people out there who uh, follow in these people's footsteps or, you know, or cut blaze new trails, you know. There's always new stuff happening. It'll work out somehow. Um, so on to January. Sir Terry Wogan. Well, how you know his shit posting at the Eurovision Song Contest will always be missed. Uh, I always watch. The, I pretty much always watch the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, Graham Norton's done a good job taking over, but Terry Wogan's drunken antics will always go down and be something that I really remember as being fantastic about that whole thing. I can't it comment was, because I didn't watch it before. <laughs> Um, the changeover, so... Oh, man, you missed the one with Lottie. That was, which is, that, I, was, that was amazing. I didn't even know about that until days later. Uh, wasn't that live was exceptional. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to get off, off topic, but yeah, you know, Terry Wogan as Eurovision combinator really was a big deal for me, and hearing that he brought that. Well, was just a this BBC radio DJ recording it. Yeah, yeah, but... Eurovision was just the highlight of my years and musically for quite a while. So it says a lot about the genesis of my shitty taste, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> well, it was the same you had in Nina Krajic and I actually quite enjoyed her album, so yeah. Oh god. Also should I not be swearing? Is YouTube gonna sort of sense you for this? No. Okay. Well. Who we listen to any of the other episodes? We swear all the time. Also super best friends swear all the time, huh? Yeah, 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 I know, I, I think it's just, I'm being, I'm just being paranoid about YouTube nowadays, whatever. Oh, just YouTube. Disregard my statement, I am being stupid. I I'm make being a, very stupid. the fact of the matter is, as long as we don't, it's basically a case of, as long as we don't swear too early in the episode, we're fine, because that's when the advertisers get their money, so. Oh, okay, fair enough. As long as we don't swear within, like, a minute or two of the episode, then we're fine, we're safe. <laughs> Did we actually do it within a minute to the episode? Note to self, next time I'm on, swear as hard as I can within the first few seconds. <laughs> well, considering that we've had instances before of Ed not even getting past the introduction without swearing. Nah, nah. Yeah, but those are on the blooper reel, so those will only be heard by Patreons. <laughs> that was a, it was meant to be a throwaway question, holy shit, I derailed everything. Anyway. Back to where we were, back to the... We can't go on this. Uh, just this one, Richard, I mean... <laughs> that's fair. How do you derail something that's already derailed? How do you derail a sudden service? <laughs> Have you never seen Buster Keaton's The General? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we move on? Yeah, um, Merle Haggard. He died of pneumonia. Pneumonia seems to be fairly common though. It, it, it pops up really often. It was like Les, like Leslie Nielsen, the actor. He died of pneumonia. Mm. It's it's a thing that it doesn't matter if you're rich or famous or whatever. Pneumonia, it really shouldn't be as common as it is, but somehow it just fucking is. It always seems to strike at the weirdest of times. And looks like he was a similar age to Leslie, Leslie Nielsen because Mel Haggard was seventy nine. How old was Leslie Nielsen? <laughs> Leslie, what, Leslie Nielsen, no way. He was older. He, he's got to be way older because he acted in his first acting gig was in um, his Good first point. major role was in Forbidden Planet, which was in the sixties. Yeah. I think it was what, was it the sixties or was it the fifties? Fifties. Fifties. Yeah. Aye. So probably, probably quite as considerable age difference, but nevertheless, pneumonia can strike a wide range of ages. So uh, he was. Listening, it, it, it hit at least seven people this year in musical. Island. 
So basically, if you're listening to this and you're feeling chilly, wrap up right now. Uh, uh, I'm worried about you. Uh, um, just, um, Leslie Nielsen was 84. Yeah, well, it seems like the older you get, the more likely you are to sort of have that kind of problem or you're more susceptible to that kind of thing. But even so, I don't think that, you know, if you're young, you're just going to get a free pass on it. If you can get it, you will get it. Yeah. <laughs> yourself. Hmm. But, uh, I, I think... Let's just try to get through this list quickly. Um, so, a uh, load of people in February who got bumped off. It's easier to say that 2016 just bumped them off. So, the CC just walked in and just fired a BFG into their unsuspecting bodies. Oh, Johnny Murphy for commitments. I've actually seen them. Ugh. God damn. Well, they've got the benefit of seeing them before they go. Um, so yeah, if you, if you like an artist and you haven't seen them yet, go see them before they die. Mm. <laughs> yeah, or go on a hiatus forever. Yeah. Okay, Richard, you wanted a weird, uh, peculiar death? Hit me. Um, Craig Strickland and his buddy Chase Moreland were killed while on a duck hunt. <laughs> okay. Well, they killed by an obnoxious dog. Did the duck get them? <laughs> There was a massive storm that caused their boat to capsize, and based on finding Moreland's body in the river, they think he immediately... Oh, that's not that weird. He immediately drowned? Yeah. Uh, well, no, even so... Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, even so, that's it. But it's an interesting setting, at yeah. the very least. Uh, right, better than that, well, I'd, I'd sooner die out hunting ducks than, you know, an hospital bed or whatever. Just... Yeah. You may be down in the hospital bed whilst being attended to by docs. It's like, quack. How many to put you to a scalpel? Quack. And li- little did you know, his spirit animal was a duck, and it did not take kindly to the incident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so that's it for the death list. Congratulations, if you were hearing this right now, you survived the year. You didn't know that. You didn't know that ghosts can't watch YouTube. Maybe that's all the afterlife is. Oh no, it doesn't make sense now. It's poetry. That, no wonder all these, all these YouTube comments are full of Nazis. On the internet, no one knows that you're a ghost. <laughs> On the internet, no one knows you're a duck. <laughs> A duck that doesn't know how to use a scalpel. On the internet, no one knows you're a ghost duck. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, <laughs> you should feed the ducks. Sir, kill it, kill it. <laughs> how do you kill that which has no life? <laughs>